In this video, I'm going to use a little bit of basic algebra and graphing while I'm talking about supply and demand. And I think this is important to do because a lot of textbooks and a lot of uh, professors just draw lines on a chalkboard and call them demand and supply. To me, it's more real if I have numbers that I can wrap my hands around and talk about. And so, not that my way is better than someone else's, but for me, it makes it more real. So we're going to be graphing uh, supply and demand equations. Now, you can make a supply schedule or demand schedule, that's a table, or you can draw a line for demand or supply, or you can have an equation. They all represent the same information, but having an equation allows you to do much more with uh, supply and demand, as you'll see as we go along. And so here are two equations, P equals 22 minus 1.5 Q, and P equals 3 plus 0.5 Q. And remember that this number that sits by itself, the 22 or the 3, those are the y-intercepts. And then the number that multiplies by Q is the slope. And we always put price on the y-axis. So this is just like an equation of a line that has a y in it, except we put P for price. And Q is on the x-axis. So instead of x, we put Q here. Now we have one for demand and one for supply. And I have a question here from this worksheet that I use in my classes. Which one is demand and how do you know? And you know that the one with the negative slope is going to be demand because of the law of demand. It says that in, in order for people to want to buy a larger quantity, price has to go down. So there's this inverse or negative relationship. Price up, quantity demanded goes down. Price goes down, quantity demanded increases. It's just a way of saying that people will buy more when the price is lower. Or people want to buy more when the price is lower. So let's graph this demand curve. 22 is the y-intercept, which means that if the quantity is 0, cover it up, price equals 22 minus 1.5 times 0, that at a quantity of 0, the price would be $22. So let's go to a quantity of 0 and up to a price of 22, way up here at the very top. Now, how do we graph the rest of the line? Probably the best way, just plug in some other number for Q. People often ask me, well, how do you know what number to plug in for Q? Well, just look at these quantities down here on the x-axis. You can plug in 2 or 4 or 10 or 20. And just plug in one until you find another point and then connect those two dots because two points make a line. So I'll plug in just a round number like 10. So um, price equals 22 minus 1.5 times 10. That's 20 minus 15. And so that tells me that at a quantity of 10, the price will be 7, 22 minus 15. So let's draw that line at a quantity of 10 price will be 7. Okay. So now let's connect those two dots with a straight line and we will have our demand curve. Now just a general uh, suggestion here when you're trying to get two points to make a line make sure they're kind of far apart that way you get a more accurate representation of what your line should look like. Now let's look at this uh, supply curve here. We know it's supply because a positive slope. If you want someone to give you a larger amount of a product, you want them to work harder, longer, take time away from doing something else, you not only have to pay them, but you have to pay them more for each additional unit to give them an extra incentive. So there's a, the law of supply. Positive relationship between the price and quantity supplied. So again, this y-intercept is 3, starting down here at a quantity of 0 and a price of 3. And then we just need to plug in any old other quantity over here. 
to find another point. So, I don't know, we could plug in 6 or 8, or 10, 12, 14, anything. Let's say 10 again. Price equals 3 plus 0.5 times 10. Half of 10 is 5, price would be 8. So at a quantity of 10, price will be 8. So let me draw another point here. Quantity 10, price is 8. Okay. And now we just want to connect those two points. Okay. So let me label these supply and demand here just so there's no ambiguity, demand, and up here, supply. Now, normally the first thing that people want to, to look at whenever they graph demand and supply is, what is the equilibrium? Where do those two lines intersect? And they intersect right here, and I'm going to move these other points out of the way out and uh, so we can see what it is that we are doing. All right, so where is that equilibrium? Well, if we just had to look on our graph here, I would say if we go straight down that the equilibrium quantity is somewhere between 9 and 10 units. And the equilibrium price is going to be somewhere between 7 and $8 over there. Now, it's great to look on the graph, but we want to get this exactly, not just a guess. So we're going to have to do a little bit of algebra and solve these two equations here for two unknowns and see what we get. Now, in economics, the way I do it, it's actually quite easy to do. Let me open up another sheet here so that we can do this step by step. So here we have these two equations. And remember that for one of these, the demand price and quantity demanded are the downward sloping line and price and quantity demanded all those points are for the supply curve 3 plus 0.5 Q and at the equilibrium the price is the same and the quantity is the same that's why it's an equilibrium and so the easy way to solve this is to notice that if the price is the same and price equals 22 minus 1.5 Q price also equals 3 plus 0.5 Q. And so what you can do very easily is set those two equal to each other. And in order to solve those two equations for one unknown, we can subtract 3 from both sides and we get 0.5 Q equals 20, sorry, that's going to be 19, 22 minus 3 minus 1.5 Q and then we can add this one and a half Q to both sides to bring it to the other side and one and a half Q's plus 0.5 Q's is going to give us two Q's so we got two Q equals 19 divide both sides by Q Q is going to be equal to nine and a half now let's go back to the graph this should agree with what we found over here that between 9 and 10, yes. Now to figure out exactly what that price is, what you want to do is substitute this quantity back into either one of these two equations. It does not matter because the price is the same for a quantity of 9.5. Again, that's part of the idea of it being an equilibrium. So put 9.5 into either one of these equations let's say put it into the supply equation here for for instance price is equal to three plus a half of nine and a half what is a half of nine and a half well it's four point seven five and so three price equals three plus four point seven five we get a price of seven dollars and seventy five cents so our equilibrium quantity is nine and a half price seven point seven five so let's make a note of that over here let's see equilibrium price equals seven seventy five equilibrium quantity equals nine point five so we could kind of guess approximately what that price is but 
you don't want to be guessing. And that math is, that, is not that difficult once you have practiced it a couple of times. So what do we want to do next with this? Well, a few different directions that we can head in. Number one is to say, uh, what if something were to change demand? What if people wanted this product more than they did before? Uh, and demand increased. Suppose tastes and preferences were to increase for the good, or it's a normal good and people's incomes go up, or um, there is a let's go in the other direction. Suppose the government puts a tax on this product and demand decreases. Then we want to be able to analyze exactly what happens to price and quantity in that situation. Suppose we were to know that, let's uh, make a copy of this demand here, and decrease it. Suppose we knew that instead of the y-intercept being 22 for this product, that the y-intercept went down to 16. Now, as we'll see in a later lecture, how this could happen is that the government passes a tax of six dollars per unit on this product. Now let me color this uh, a different color so that we can keep track of what it is. I'll color this red. Comparing the original equilibrium of seven dollars and seventy-five cents and nine and a half units over here to this new equilibrium, let me draw a little circle here so that we can keep our eye on what it is that we're doing. Little yellow circle. What's the price now? Well, instead of 775, it looks like it's gone down. Look over at the y axis, the price axis. Looks like to be $6 and something, maybe $6.25. Now, how could we figure out? Well, we could certainly take this new equation, 16 minus the slope is the same, 16 minus 1 and a half Q, and solve to see where it equals the supply equation. And I'm pretty certain we, we would get $6.25 here. You pause the video and verify this. And we would get 6.5 for the quantity. So anytime de demand decreases, ceteris paribus, we're going to get a decrease in price and a decrease in quantity. So that's one thing we could do with this kind of graph. Now let me get rid of this uh, new demand curve here. One other thing that we can do with this kind of graph is to say, okay, suppose that the quantity was not nine and a half. Suppose we were out there and we saw that the quantity was 11. Let me draw a line here at a quantity equals 11. So we're not at equilibrium. For some reason, quantity equals 11 instead of 9.5. Then we want to look at what's what would happen in such a case. We see people wanting to buy 11. Let's look at the demand equation. If people are buying 11 units, then what must the price be to those people? Well, let's look on the demand curve at 11 and look over at the price. Well, the price must be 5 units if people are, sorry, not 5 units, $5.50. The price must be $5.50 if we see people buying that number. Now, what if we see people supplying 11 units? Well, then the price they're selling the product for must be eight dollars and fifty cents. Now we can verify that by plugging in 11 into the demand and supply equations and seeing what the price has to be. But on the graph we can pretty clearly see that it's going to be about 850 and the equation will verify this. And same thing with demand, the price must be 550. This can't be the equilibrium quantity because the price would have to be different that the buyers are receiving uh, sorry, paying versus what the sellers are receiving. So I'm going to pause here and I'm going to come back for a second edition.